All right, so let's also take a look how the singular vectors look like, just to get an idea. So let's make a new, new plot. Uh, actually, so this was a matrix and its singular values. Then let's take another look at a uh, few first singular vectors. Mm. Few first singular vectors, let's, uh, I don't know, maybe let's take five of them and uh, so they are columns of V. So now first the first one we would take V uh, column number one and this would be Let's see how this looks like. Oh, maybe actually I meant five one one this way. Okay, let's just let's just do this in a in a quick and dirty way and ah yeah, not very ah. Too many things to change. Oh, maybe. Sorry. <laughs> maybe not the most inspiring show on earth, but uh, bear with me. <laughs> yeah, it's a very robust way of doing it. There could be a loop or whatever, but. So there was some question about the, the continuity. Uh, we see that these are really smooth, uh, look like smooth functions, and also they do look a little bit like sines or cosines, getting more and more frequency. That's a very typical thing, uh, I would say, especially for convolution matrices and, and uh, finite difference matrices uh, implementing some, some derivatives. So this is quite a, quite a typical behavior. Sure, there is, yes, yes. There's a full uh, infinite dimensional theory uh, of this stuff, I mean, in function spaces and, and operators, uh, as opposed to uh, just discrete vectors and matrices. But we don't go too deeply into that in this course, but there, there is a full-blown theory of that kind. We touch it a little bit in the book as well, but, but not very deeply there. Okay, so then um, let's see what happens. Let's return to a little bit more moderate noise levels. Let's go back to, let's say, 10% noise, which is anyway quite, quite significant. And maybe let's also see how many singular values are we using. So this is the R alpha, maybe we could actually, when we plot the singular values, we could actually plot them with black dots, uh, all of them, and then, then on top of that, let's plot uh, in red the ones we use. So singular values just from 1 to R alpha in red. So now we see uh, in our <coughs> oh sorry we, we should we should change this to figure three so here now you see we are only using the few very few first ones uh, ah. so very few first ones so it seems to me that we could use at least these uh, at least I think something like 20. 10, yeah, 20. Yes, let's see what happens when we use a bit more of them. 
So let's go to 10. Ah, see what happens. Our reconstruction is getting better, kind of closer to the actual vector. And not so much caring about the noise. You see, this is from the non-noisy data, and this is from the noisy data. So they look pretty much the same. So the noise doesn't have really uh, a big effect. Now, this is the same picture all the time. So now we see here, uh, we can take more, I think. <laughs> uh, what? What? <laughs> Where did this come from? Come on! I <laughs> I'm pretty sure I didn't use 8.25. Well, <laughs> let's take 15. <laughs> okay, <laughs> bit weird. Okay, so you see, uh, it's finding the shape of our signal better and better, a little bit like Fourier series. Uh, and still, the noise is not uh, too big of a problem. And we are still using just a few first points here. So I think we can use we can use more. Let's go to 30. Still it's pretty okay. Now we see a little bit of the effect of noise. These blue lines are a bit different from each other. So the noise is now affecting uh, and I think we can see the reason from here because now we are starting to use uh, somewhat smaller singular values already. And now if we go more uh, to more and more of them uh, in the D plus alpha uh, matrix, the, single, the, the diagonal elements start to be bigger and bigger because we are taking uh, the inverse numbers of smaller and smaller singular values. But we can easily try, let's say, 50. And now we start really seeing uh, the effect of noise. So this is how truncated singular value decomposition works. If you use just a few first singular vectors, you get a very, very robust reconstruction that doesn't really care about noise much at all. And the more you use them, uh, the better reconstruction you are getting until the noise starts to make trouble. And the way to see when it starts and why is to look at the singular values. So you see, the more we are using the smaller ones, the stronger the effect of noise is. Now we could also... Oh, sorry. Yes. Yes. So uh, the thing is that um, if we take a look at the singular vectors, as we as we discussed earlier, these are the building blocks we are using, and they are smooth like that, and they they look they look like kind of uh, sines and cosines. So this is like we are trying to build up a, a discontinuous signal using Fourier modes. Uh, kind of these globally oscillating building blocks. So that kind of tells us that that's not an easy task, especially because when we start to use more and more oscillating ones, which in the case of Fourier series you will need very, very oscillatory high frequencies to build up discontinuities with more accuracy. Here it becomes impossible because the use of the more oscillatory singular vectors is unstable because the corresponding singular values become small. So it's kind of a trade-off, <laughs> and, and yes, there is no way to build up a discontinuous signal using, for example, these five functions. I mean, no way. <laughs> Any linear combination of these five functions will be very smooth and slowly varying. So does that mean that if the signal that the original signal was smooth, it would mm -hmm. be easier to recover? Yes, definitely. Uh, 
Let, we try some let's try. Yeah, let's train. Let's change our signal. Uh, so here is our unknown signal. So we could say, um, let's put here x equals lin space. Let's go from zero to one and use n points. And we could take. Let's let's comment away this and. We could take f to be. I know any suggestions for some f sign. sign. And let's let's maybe do it in this way and see what happens. Uh, let's first use only. Three singular vectors. Hmm. Something is wrong. What? Matrix A times F. Let's see. Ah, oh, it's a horizontal vector. It should be vertical. Yes. Then even with three singular vectors, we get quite a nice reconstruction, I would say. Well, these are the same as before. We didn't change A. Uh, these are the same. We didn't change A. Uh, and now, of course, we could, we could use some more singular values. Let's say those 15 stable ones. So the noiseless reconstruction is almost perfect, perfect, and even with noise, we are getting quite a nice one. So yes, indeed, uh, here is a connection between the structure of the singular vectors and the thing we want to reconstruct, which is the thing I, I mentioned before, that usually the general philosophy of solving inverse problems is to, to complement the bad and unstable and, and incomplete measurement information with some other information. But now in this very method, in this truncated singular value decomposition, uh, actually the, the only thing we can do is to use less or more singular vectors that have predetermined shapes. So we don't have much power over what kind of other information we are putting in. Yeah. Uh, choosing the R alpha, it's, uh, this is in general a very difficult problem, uh, but there, there are a few methods developed for that. Uh, we'll take uh, a closer look at that actually with, with when we go to Tikhonov regularization and total variation regularization. Uh, similar methods will work also, some of those methods will also work for truncated SVD, but I think, I think we don't go too deeply now into that. But with the other methods, we will go in, into it a bit more deeply. But it's a, it's a great question. I mean, it's in the very core of the whole approach. <laughs> now we are just trying out a few values, and we know the actual truth, so we can compare. But this is not the case in real inverse problems. Then f is really unknown. And when we get something out of our reconstruction algorithm, we cannot really compare it like here. We compare it to the, the real thing because we, we don't know the real thing then. So it's, it's really a serious problem how to choose those parameters. Okay. Um, any more questions or comments about this simple example? If not, let's Let's 